Welcome back, 0k fans, to Natalie Is That Done. This is Shadow Fury 333 with another exhibition match, another match with Kane, and it's going to be on Red Comet. Apparently, a Hover versus Tank matchup. Indeed, Hover versus Tank. So, Google Frog, for those of you not familiar, Google Frog is basically the main designer of this game, or at least the current main designer of this game, the one who's actually responsible for making all the units what they are, or at least making all the units act the way they do. Also, there's a lot of other things, like this particular economy display and, well, stats display in general, which I quite appreciate. Anyway, Kane, on the other hand, as I mentioned before, is a is the other caster, basically. The other main caster. There are other people besides us two that do casts, but Kane and I are the ones that have done the most that have done the most frequently. I think Kane's gotten busy recently, because I haven't noticed them do any for the last month or so. Hopefully they'll be around for next... There's probably going to be a tournament next week, I'm guessing. Hopefully they'll be around, because... I like to cast with some combination of Kane, Sackdoth, Google Frog, and Floris. Usually Floris and Sackdoth, though Kane's come up a lot more recently. Anyway, Kane coming with the early daggers, just to scout out, see what's going on. Early Kodachi from Google Frog, because why not? And both players going for the center start, going very quick. Now that one going for the corner starts, they both want to try to go somewhat aggressive and also have that as a section to go to mid game, as Google Frog is doing right now. So, one of the things in this map is that. There's basically three rough effective start points. There's this area out in the southwest or northeast. That's the typical start point. That's more defensible. That's just you have three metal extractors right at the start instead of two without having to worry about getting out of position in order to get the metal extractors. So three easy metal extractors. You have a corner that you don't have to worry about defending the back of. And in general, you just have a very safe position. The center, on the other hand, gives you the shortest rush distance. Well, can give it, well, it's not the shortest rush distance, but it gives you a shorter rush distance, given if you're assuming they're going here. But it's still relatively safe. Still have a decent amount of choke points around it. And once you set up a bit further forward, you can then take these metal extractors over here, as Google Frog is doing right now. And you don't have to worry about trying to go from that defensible position forward. You're actually just moving backwards. You're basically taking territory, you're claiming territory that you already have relative control over. But it's risky because you are a bit closer to the opponent and they could rush you pretty hard, so you have to be somewhat aggressive in this position. The last one, which you almost never seen in 1v1, I've seen it once, it was a game between Arphelios and Lodery in one of the tournaments. If you start here, or here, you get, assuming your opponent starts over in the northeast or southwest, you get the absolute shortest rush distance, and they don't expect it, that rarely happens, usually it's these two. This spot right here is essentially the cheese rush spot. But as you can see, neither player is going there, so I'm not going to really discuss it too much. Suffice to say that, typically, that is the spot which, if you want to go for cheese build, that's where you go. Although if your opponent goes for a center spot like this, it's not going to work that well, because the rush distance is no shorter. And now you're bottled into this one area that can be easily choked out. Like they just easily just contain you here. It's always the risk about corner starts, which is one of the reasons why the center start is pretty nice, because it means you can go for this corner without, without being contained. You have much more territory to work with from the start, you just have to defend it harder. Anyhow, Google Frog with another Kodachi? Yeah, another Kodachi coming in here. Where's the first one? Ah! First one's doing quite a lot of work, too. Taking that Northwest. So Kane went for the Northwest first, which... Looks like it did not pay off. Rather risky. Google Frog instead going for the Northeast first. Although both players are expanding with the same units. Like Commanders in the Northeast and Workers in the Southeast or, south or Northwest. Like, commanders in the safe spot, and workers in the rush spot. But it looks like Google Frog is... Well, they're getting ahead. They're definitely getting ahead, but these scalpels... The scalpels are up! We have scalpels! It's three and a half minutes into the game... Or, see, not even three and a half, it's like two and a half minutes into the game when they started coming in. So, hovercraft play has started. <laughs> Actually, I looked it up. The last buff to scalpels that I can tell, at least that was noted in the change list, was in January, when they eliminated over, or they added overkill prevention to the scalpels firing. It's kind of interesting. It does mean that they are more powerful against the light units, which were sort of the counter, because you just send one glaive forward, or one scorcher, or one kodachi, and then they f all fire at it, and then the rest could come in while they're on cooldown. Well, now that's no longer the case, because they have overkill prevention, so only one of them would fire, and the rest of them would be just be ready to fire when they need to. So you have to risk a large army in order to get them on cooldown. Not to say you can't, it's just not as trivial. But it's kind of funny, that was that was seven months ago. 
like the meta has just adapted to that. But that's typical. It usually takes a little while for people to realize just how powerful it changes, and maybe the scalpels are just a flash in the pan. And when it comes to heavy tanks, it's kind of hard to deal with anything, really. And scalpels just have that accuracy that makes it hard, especially hard to deal with. Because heavy tanks don't have a huge number of units, they can't easily throw a bunch of cheap fodder units in the way. Although Google Frog switching to air instead just, I guess, to add a little bit more firepower. I mean, from the top it's going to be a bit hard. Scalpels can't hit air very well. The, move, the units just move too fast. They try. They fire a bunch of missiles into the sky and hope for the best. Usually they get nothing. Sometimes they get lucky. The so Google Frog looks like they're banking on that. Probably going to get a few... Oh, Ravens, not... Phoenix. Well, that makes sense, actually. I was going to say Phoenixes, but why would they build Phoenixes? That's a bad idea. Build Ravens. Get rid of Scalpels. Yeah, Assist Ravens would probably be the way to get rid of Scalpels, which is also a way to get Ravens back into the metagame, because Ravens have not been popular. Until about, I think, three weeks ago or so. And even then, they aren't... Like, they are thankfully, no longer the go-to air unit they used to be. At this point, Google Frog, they are way ahead in the economy. They can easily get away with this. I'm actually kind of surprised just how ahead they are. I mean, okay, there is... That 7.5 metal there, but that would give Kane, what, 33 metal? Compared to 40? None of that's reclaimed, too, we should point out. Like, how much of that is reclaimed? None of it! Thanks, Google Frog. That's actually really handy. It's especially handy because I was curious. But no, Google Frog's entirely off static rate. That's static economy. Kane has a bit of overdrive. Over Google Frog has none. They're actually starting to stall energy. <laughs> Not so much that Kane can really take advantage of it, but still, they are starting to stall energy. More scalpels coming in, though. The Ravens are going to come in. They're going to tear apart the scalpels. Now, the one difficult thing is that flails are powerful. The hover anti-air is not something to be laughed at. But at the same time, I don't think... No, Kane does not realize this is happening. And Pillager's coming in as well. Also a good choice. Against scalpels, I think the best choice is probably something... Either air, like Ravens, or long range. I didn't say they couldn't hit Ravens. Wow, that one's almost dead. But anyway... Yeah, something the air that comes in and kills them before it matters. Something really light like Glaives. Or something that fires from such a distance they can't even deal with it. Like Artillery. Because Pillagers... I mean, sorry. Scalpels only have about 450 range. They have typical Skirmisher range. Pillagers, on the other hand, I think are 1,000? 11... Oh, wow. 1180. Yeah. So they can start shooting right now. And Pillagers are perfectly accurate now. They got buffed recently. They're going to have no problem tearing apart these Scalpels. They got no problem tearing by the scalpels if the scalpels remain stationary. Scalpels moving, of course, are a little bit harder to deal with, but that's how you counter artillery. You move! Kane right now, what do they know? Not much. They don't have much radar coverage. Google Frog, on the other hand, Google Frog has considerably more radar coverage, I think. Yeah, they got more radar coverage. Not by much, but they do have they do have knowledge of the position of these forces. And now the Phoenix comes, because now there's enough units for it to be useful. And, of course, the Flail. As mentioned. Flails deal only, like, yeah, about 400 damage. So, Phoenixes... Phoenixes only have 400 health? Really? Huh. I guess... Oh, 650 health. And here comes the Reaper. So, Pillager, a bit of a deviation, though its buff does help. Yeah, Reaper, that's the... That, there's your typical heavy tank. That's what you normally see. Well, his ravens are helping a bit. And the vulture's helping a lot, too, because right now... Oops. Oh, we can't even see it. Never mind. Vultures actually have radar jamming. It's not super obvious right now. But yeah, vultures actually have a bit of a jammer. Kind of wish it would glow the terrain or something where it was jamming. But yeah, that's... That has jamming. So, radar couldn't catch it if Kane had radar up front. Where's Kane's radar? Oh, Kane's radar is right in their base. Yeah, half the radar is off the map. So if they had frontline radar around here or something, then that vulture would make a difference. Google Frog doesn't know that though, they're just being prudent, and that is wise. Prudence is well advised. Although admittedly, given that they have 20 extra metal on Kane, being imprudent wouldn't lose them too much. I think at this point though, they mentioned in the comment, they didn't know how to play this matchup very well. They're a bit confused as to what to do. So I think what they're trying to do is just play it kind of defensively. Like, semi-defensively, make sure they have enough units that they don't do anything silly. 
and then make sure they have enough of an economy that if they do something silly and they lose a bunch of units, they can easily rebuild them. Though, given that they're playing heavy tanks, you kind of need 30 metal per second minimum to make them work. To get Reapers up in a decent amount of time, these things cost 850 each. To get them up in a decent amount of time, you need at least 25 metal or so. Like, 30 metal preferably, because that gives them up 1 per 30 seconds. And even that's not that fast. But yeah, running two factories, one of them heavy tanks, with 60 metal. That's a pretty good speed. And there's Google Frog trying to figure out what, well, trying to push in, because why not? Kind of risky though, and Kane. Kane wasting those Raven shots nicely. These halberds. Oh yeah, hold fire. That's what you want to do. I should point out, hold fire is right here. Those of you who are not familiar with the fire state system, this is the fire state system. It's extremely useful. For halberds, at least, because they're all shielded right now. Because halberds take very little damage when they aren't firing. Which is especially useful for that disarm. That that Thunderbird basically did nothing as a result of that. So Kane getting all of the information knows exactly what's happening. These halberds could probably escape unscathed except for that one that died. But yeah, these halberds are just... I don't know, not, not quite. Another one will die. But still, that's, inform that's loads of information that Kane has. Ah, and they unwisely went to fire. But yeah, now Kane knows everything. Like, Kane has complete knowledge. Oops. Kane has complete knowledge of Google Frog's base right now. The only thing they don't know is a couple things over to the south, which don't matter too much. Like, there's a radar, which makes a bit of a difference. The Vulture is a much bigger difference, though. Google Frog hiding their commander. Which probably won't work, given that scalpels can hit over things, but they are disarmed. And with Google Frog coming here to the Panther Swarm, this is going to be powerful. Panthers did get a health buff. I mentioned la on Wednesday, they got a health buff to 1100 from 980. And that is going to be a problem. So much so that Kane just throws in the towel. I mean, Kane didn't have the... Kane actually did it remarkably well for having 75% roughly of Google... 75 to 66% of Google Frog's economy for that entire game. They held pretty well. But I think seeing Google Frog's base, they kind of realized, what are they going to do? I mean, there's a dozen Panthers bearing down on them. That's, like, seriously, that's a bit more than that, but still, almost 5,000 metal worth of Panthers bearing down on them. That's not something you can easily deal with. Panthers in general are actually kind of hard to deal with. For Hovercraft, it's not so bad, I don't think. Like, Maces, I think, can do decently well. Daggers, I think, die too quickly to be useful. I'm not sure what else. I don't think they really have much else other than those two. That would And scalpels, of course. But scalpels need to have position. You need to be able to see them coming and fire at them, destroying most of them in advance. And with 1,100 health, that's two shots. That's still pretty viable. Anyway, next game is going to be between... Google Frog and Kane once again, this time in Isle of Grief. A map I was actually picked because I wanted to show it a bit. I have played on this map. Isle of Grief, that is. Obviously, Red Comet I've played on several times. Isle of Grief is a map, well, I'll go into more detail. It seems a bit crafty, a bit StarCrafty. I'm not entirely sure if it was based on any StarCraft maps. It kind of has that ramp, plateau, and choke point setup that a lot of StarCraft maps do, and there are some, like, ravaged maps in Zero K, or in the Spring Engine community in general, that are based off StarCraft maps. Ravage works really well. Isle of Grief in my experience, was a little wonky, but I'll go over it more once we get to it, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.